Okay, it's a little video to show you how to use the periodic table in order to work out the formulas for compounds. So when you get a periodic table in front of you, you would have the group numbers going across the periodic table here. So this is, is group one. Remember, groups are vertical, group two, and then so on and so on and so on. What the first thing you should do, my advice to you when you, when you get in, in an exam situation and you open your paper up, you will have a periodic table in there. The first job is above these, write down plus one, plus two, plus three, four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. And those numbers at the top that I've put in red now, they are the charges on the ions that form in those tables. So if you look at this group here, to give you an example, in this group, this is group one, we have got sodium. Sodium, if you remember, has got an atomic number of 20 of 11 sorry so we've got atomic number of 11 that means it contains 11 electrons and 11 electrons are arranged 2 8 and 1 that's not a stable electron arrangement so what has to happen here for sodium is sodium needs to lose this outer electron in order for it to become stable if it loses an outer electron so it loses an electron which is a negative charge it is going to become a sodium ion n a plus, which is why the elements in group one all have a single positive charge. If we just do a, another comparison, let's say we pick in this group, we've got magnesium, magnesium in group two, then magnesium has got 12 uh, electrons, its um, proton number is 12, so it's got 2, 8, 2. Again, that's not a stable electron arrangement, so how does that become stable? It becomes stable by losing two. So if you lose two electrons, you lose two negatives, you become positive by two. So in this case, here is my magnesium, it forms a plus two ion. If we jump over, let's try one over here. Let's try, say, something in group six. In group six, we've got oxygen. Oxygen has got a proton number of eight. That gives it uh, eight, uh, eight electrons as well. So they're arranged two, six. Two, six means it's not stable. How does it become stable? It becomes stable by gaining two. If you gain two electrons, electrons are negative, it becomes O, two minus, which is why above the six is a two minus. If we pick one in here, so that was where my oxygen was. If we pick one in here, there's my chlorine, say. Chlorine is in group seven got 17 electrons then we have got two eight seven that's not a stable range uh, configuration again this should be an eight to make it stable so it becomes two eight eight so it gains an electron that is cl minus which it fits in with the minus one so these numbers at the top tell me the charge notice the one in the middle here this is group four this is where carbon would be and carbon doesn't form ions so carbon in here doesn't form an ion, but it does form four bonds. So this tells me the number of bonds this wants to make. We know that carbon wants to form four bonds. Remember diamond and graphite. Diamond contains four covalent bonds. Graphite has three covalent bonds with one electron becoming delocalized. So it could have formed four. So these charges at the top are the charge on the ions that the, the groups form or the number of bonds, the valency. That's what valency is, the number of bonds that these uh, atoms need to make. So let me show you how to use this. If I was to pick sodium, well, we've talked about it already, is in group one. So sodium is a plus one ion. Because it's plus one, it's got a valency of one. It wants to make one bond. And if I was to pick, say, oxygen from over here, oxygen is in group six, so it's a two minus ion. Therefore, the valency is, is two, so the charge becomes the valency without the charge in there. So this is a plus one, so it's one. This is a, a negative two, so it's two. To work out the formula, I now cross these over. So they cross over. So the sodium gets a number two, and the oxygen gets a number one. So I don't put the number one down. So my formula for sodium oxide is Na2O to make it work. Let's try another one. Um, here's a second one. Let's try, say, magnesium with chlorine. So magnesium is in 
group two, so it's a two plus ion, so this is two plus, therefore the valency, remember the valency is the same as the charge, so it's a two, it needs to make two bonds. Uh, the chloride is in group seven, so its valency is one, so minus one ion, so the valency here is one. Cross those over. Mg gets a number one. Chlorine gets a number two. Two, so the formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. And this will work for lots of different uh, formulas that we need to calculate from the table. I'm going to show you some different ones just to, to be aware of. So if I just chuck that out of the way a second, here's another piece of paper. Let's put this over the top. Um, so if I just show you a couple more things to watch out for. Um, let's say we picked on magnesium again, but this time we selected oxygen. So magnesium is in group two when we look it up, therefore it is a two plus ion, therefore the valency is two. The oxygen is in group six, so it's minus two, so two minus ion and the valency is two. Now, because these numbers will cancel down, what we have to do is allow them to cancel down and become simpler. So this becomes one and one, then you cross them over, so you get Mg gets a one, don't write it down. Oxygen also gets a one, don't write it down. Magnesium oxide is MgO. Just to show you this kind of works for carbon. So carbon, and let's have bonding with oxygen. We know that carbon is in group four, so it's got a valency of four. And we know that oxygen is in group six, so it's got a valency of two. Now remember the rule we just learned that if these cancel down, you have to cancel them down. So this becomes two and one, then cross them over and we get carbon gets a one, oxygen gets a two. There we have the form of carbon dioxide, CO2. So this will work for ev every uh, element in the groups in the product table. Things as well it will help you with, um, if you look at complex ions, so we have got hydroxide ions, we have got um, sulfate ions, SO4, two minus, um, nitrate ions, NO3, and ammonium ions, NH4 plus. These don't appear in the periodic table. They don't appear uh, in groups because they are complex ions. They're made up from more than one type of, of element in there. But what we have got is the charge. So the valency for this is one, because it's a minus one ion. This is SO4, two minus, so this valency is two. NO3 minus, valency one. And this is an ammonium ion, NH4, and then it's plus, so it's just plus one, so it's just one. So they're the valencies for the complex ions. And if we try, try to work with these now, Let's try, for example, um, sodium with um, the sulfate. So we have got sodium, Na, and SO4. Now remember, if I slide this back down, you can see the periodic table. Remember, sodium is in group one. Therefore, this forms a plus one, and its valency is one. The sulfate is SO4, two minus, so the valency is two. Swap them over. We end up with Na gets the number two, and the sulfate gets the number one. We don't write the number one down, so sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. We can do the same. Um, let's try a trickier one. Um, let's give ourselves magnesium and the hydroxide. So the magnesium is in group two. We can see it's still here, so it's Mg2+, and we've got the hydroxide OH minus, because it's a minus, that's a valency one. This is two plus, therefore the valency is two. Cross them over, so they swap. Mg gets a number one, and the hydroxide, the OH, is gonna get the number two. Now we have to be careful. This is where we need two hydroxides. So if I just do that, all that is given me here is one oxygen, two hydrogens, that's not two hydroxides. So to make it give me two hydroxides, I've got to put this in brackets, and then there's two lots of the hydroxide in that formula. So magnesium hydroxide is Mg brackets OH close brackets two, magnesium hydroxide. Tricky one to try, a bit of a challenge one if I slide that up a little bit. 
Um, in fact, let's get a, a fresh sheet. Tricky one to try for yourself. Um, here is, um, let's try aluminium. Aluminium is in group three. So because it's in group three, it forms a three plus iron. So aluminium is three plus. And let's have that reacting with the sulfate, which is SO4, two minus. So my valences, three plus iron is three. The valency here is a two minus iron, so it's two. Swap them over. Aluminium gets a number two. We're okay with that. The sulfate is SO4. Now this is going to get a number three. Remember, if I'm going to three here, I need to put brackets and there's my number three. So it's aluminium sulfate is AL2 brackets SO4 close brackets three. Have a try again. Best way to get to get good at this is to keep practicing, try different formulas, work them out. Remember, if these cancel, cancel them down and don't forget about the brackets. If it's a complex iron, you have to put brackets in if it's going to be multiplied out by a number. Good luck.